Once again, welcome to Grade 9 RIE with Luando at Sonio School. Today, we are looking at a very interesting topic in one's life. Friendship, love and marriage. You know that you begin with friendship, later on as you mature, as you grow, you develop that love and you may end up in marriage. But we need to understand what we mean by friendship. Friendship is a relationship between two or more people who care about each other. Take note, two or more people who care about each other. Within friendship, you have what we call best friends. Who is a best friend? A best friend is a person who can you can depend on, respect and share secrets with. That one is your best friend. Who does not pull you down? All oh, this is common today. Pull him down, pull him down. That was not your best friend. The best friend encourages you, does not pull you down. He encourages you, meaning that lifts you up when all is not well. A best friend always is by your side in terms of difficulties and in times of happiness. We do not want friendship where it is only one-sided, then that is not good, true friendship. Now, how do we understand the conditions of true friendship? The major ones, there are two, love and trust. If you are to take note and understand someone that indeed is a real good, true friend, you have to check out these two attributes, love and trust. Love makes friends, yes. Trust cements the relationship. Love will make friends, but trust will cement and build that relationship. Other conditions may include encouragement, a good, influencing, inspiring kind of friend. You make sure that you live up to your best. When they're able to encourage you, they will see you up to your very best. The other factor or condition could be that of repeated and unplanned interaction. You know, staying in regular contact with you will build that good relationship, bring about true friendship, soberness and maturity. Not just speaking with disrespect, about others. You know, you've got to be so sober and mature to the point of even accepting your family as well as friends. It is sad to notice that uh, people are saying they are good friends, but immediately they discover that their family, they are somehow impoverished or they are living in poverty. Uh, they begin to disregard such relationship. Sometimes they are different, differently abled. They say, ah, but what about that, your friend who has only one eye and so on. They begin to disrespect the friend of the other friend. That is not good condition for a true friendship. A true friendship will accept you the way you are, the way your family is. Not where your family, once they are doing very well, maybe in business, or they could be attached to some political kind of activity. They were ministers, maybe presidents. Once they are no longer in those positions, the friendship ends. No, that is not a good condition for a true friendship. You will note that, one, one who has a friend, who has no friend rather, is usually lonely and incomplete. You need to have a friend, but bear in mind the condition of true friendship. If you have no friend, you are likely to be lonely and incomplete and usually sad. Secondly, you need to note that one who has a friend, implying good, true friend, is usually free, complete, and usually knows himself or herself better, improves one's character. How do we qualify?
clarify this. We can quote from the Bible, Acts chapter 9, 26 to 30, thereabout. Also Acts 11, verses 20 to 26. We find two characters here. One character who is called Paul. Initially, it was called Saul. Hey, this name Saul. We had the king Saul, wanted to clear David. Now this Saul used to persecute Christians. But Barnabas never gave up on him. He encouraged the relationship to build. He made sure he protected him. He was so brave to be with him even in dangerous places. You know, he had also to support him and give him an opportunity for himself, Paul, to practice his spiritual gifts to the point that he was given freedom to go and run a church at Antioch. That is good friendship, whereby even when things are difficulties, you are well able to be encouraged to excel. Some apostles could not still believe that he was a changed man. Therefore, Barnabas saw to it that introduced him to these apostles to say he is no longer a persecutor of Christians. If anything, he is a Christian believer himself. He has come to realization that only love and trusting of one another builds real friendship. So he was able to even bravely support him in the presence of the apostles. That was Barnabas with that kind of relationship. When you go to Ruth, chapter 1, maybe 1 to 17, you begin to see that in that Old Testament, there was also another good example of real friendship. And that was of the daughter-in-law, Ruth, and the mother-in-law, Naomi. Even when the husband had died, oh, this relationship could not stop. Ruth simply said, I'll go where you go. Your people with my people. Where I will die is where I shall die. That's the kind of relationship whereby even in difficult times, the relationship does not break. That is real true friendship in Christianity. Further on, you find that when you quote in First Samuel, the chapters of 18, 19 and that of 20, we find two great friends, Jonathan and David. Remember David, the one who brought down the Goliath. They were so much good friends that even when King Saul wanted and planned to kill David, the princess Jonathan, the friend to David, had to inform him of the plan of the father. And even to protect him, to make sure he's defended and not being cleared or killed by the father King Saul. That's a kind of friendship whereby it goes even beyond just your own bloody parents. You are able to defend each other even in difficult times. A moment came that David was supposed to be killed. Jonathan continued to show that bravery less and show that indeed he understood the conditions of friendship. That is friendship in Christianity. What about in Hinduism? Remember, as far as your grade 9 is concerned, we have all the time needed to stress on these four religions. Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, and Zambian tradition. In as far as Hindus are concerned, a friend is the one who helps a stranger. Wow, think of that, stranger. You see a stranger, you are just passing by. As, in, as far as Hinduism is concerned, you are not a good friend. The one who shares good things is a protector of others against the evil one. But some of you, you make fun of those who are not being persecuted, who are being attacked by the evil ones. But I thank God we learn something from such a religion in Hinduism that we need to protect one another and each other against the evil one. Maybe the evil one were the gassers. Did you protect yourself against those? Then you behave like Hindus in terms of friendship. What about in Islam? In Islam, three factors comes out so clearly about friendship. There is so much about brotherhood. Remember, this is a religion that encourages so much of brotherhood, where women are not so much encouraged to go and attend congregation or worship at their mosque. So brotherhood has gone so much in it. So to them, a friend is a brother and a believer of their religion called Islam, as far as the Muslims are concerned. A true friend, in as far as Islam is concerned, is the one who is trustworthy, who is honest, and loyal. 
you got to be loyal to your relationship. Not today you are there, you share secrets again, you don't adhere to that, you go and spread the secret to other people, you are not being truth, trustworthy and loyal. Friends do not deceive or cheat each other. You got to be truthful at all times. That way you are a friend as far as Islam is concerned. Coming back to friendship in Zambian tradition. <laughs> Who is a friend as far as Zambian tradition is concerned? The one who at all times will be by your side. When we talk of all times, we mean in most cases hardships. One will be available even when you have a funeral. One will be available even when you face calamity of such as drought, not having invested enough in that your area or land or village. But you're always there to say, okay, whatever I've invested, here you are my friend, we can share. That is a true friend. Friendship, as far as Zambian tradition is concerned, is very important. Why? It forms that great relationship because it helps to build a better community where everyone shares what he or she has to those who are needy. Remember, the needy could be those who may not be visually okay, maybe they are visually impaired, who could be lame, or sick, or widows, or orphans. But as far as Zambian tradition is concerned, you don't need to mock such. What you need is to get closer to them and be of help in their need. And at all times, you have to bear this in mind. It's a very important practice which we can learn from. Even if you are found maybe in a modern society today, you don't need to throw away some of these traditions because they build you to face any challenges. And challenges could be a friend who is so much in need. Challenges could be a friend who has lost all the harvest because of droughts. Sometimes rain is there, but it's so much that it causes floods. It is not in their own making that they have lost all that which they had planted. So you got to come in and be in position to help such who are facing such hardships. Then that way you are exhibiting to a friendship in as far as uh, Zambian tradition is concerned. It's very, very important that you bear this in mind that even as you are in the school, you need to see to it that you are able to help one another. How can you help one another? You have an assignment, you have homework, you have a research work. You can sit in groups. Yes, you are saying now there is COVID-19. This virus can separate you a little bit. But once it's over, get back to those groups or via this online, form those groups of study and share the information. And when you are sharing, then you are building your relationship. The relationship that cares for each other is very important. You need to be interacting. Is it through the same online? You interact with your friend. As you regularly get in contact, then you are building best relationship where we call best of friends. Remember we said friendship is between two people or more who care for each other. So you could be the two of you who are best of friends. So was the case of Naomi and Ruth. So was the case of Jesus himself, his disciples. So was the case of Jonathan and David. It's why that Jonathan was, you know, a prince belonging to the king so he could not just favor his own family because they are best of friends he defended David when it meant that David needed to have the protection so a good friend a best friend protects a best friend visits each other even in moments of happiness and enjoy together best friends they are there even doing hardships in difficult times they don't give up on friends if anything they encourage each other to move up together. They make sure that indeed they lean on love and friendship. Now you need to understand that this friendship is also levels. You can be like in class here. Most of you are <laughs> almost the same age mate. So there are levels. People of the same age, you know how you interact. But you may discover that the second <laughs> level of friendship is that of elderly people and the young. I mean, a good example is you 
and your grandparent. I believe the way you interact with your grandma, grandpapa, grandfather, grandmother is not the same you interact within your age group or your own parents. There is that you know, jokey way of interacting and you find it easy sometimes to relate with old people such as the grandparents. So there is a relationship at that level of young and the elderly. Okay? You also have relationship between the people and the God. Hey, how do you cement your relationship with God? That is another high level of relationship, the third level of relationship. So there is also a need to understand that you can be friends with God. It's not just, the, oh, I go to church, I go to the mosque, I go to the temple, I go to this shrine, therefore I have a relationship to God. What is real relationship to God? Is to follow what God's command. That is why it's very important that you need to understand the laws from the scriptures which are called commands. One thing we forget that if these human laws are called human laws, which means they are laws which are just made by man and can be changed, but commandments, <laughs> these are laws which are scripture, made by God. And God commands us very much that you should love one another. You should love your neighbor. You know, your neighbor could be one you perceive as your enemy. Maybe he's a murderer. You may hate murder, but love the murderer. How? Show them that love which is godly, the divine love. Then you begin to see that that kind of character of murder in people will begin to stop and you become good children or good neighbors. Yes, they could be prostitutes. You may need to love those prostitutes, but don't love prostitution. You hate the prostitution. As you love the prostitute, they'll change into good beings because they are created in God's image, mind you. Yes, they could be witches. You may need to hate witchcraft. They practice that which does. But when you show deep down love for God, you know God loves all of us. When he brings rain, he does not choose. Hey, for the witches, there won't be rains. Ah, for the righteous, all oh, rain will, will, will fall. It falls everywhere because that human being was created in God's image. So all what you can hate is their character and help them to change from that character. And at the end of the day, you begin to exercise that great condition of true friendship, love, and of course, trust. Remember, in the beginning I said, this trust is the one which cements relationship. If you trust God, your relationship will definitely be cemented. If you trust that your neighbor, if you trust that your young sister, if you trust that your parent, if you trust that your teacher, the relationship will be cemented. Love can bring about friends. We make friends through love. But thereafter, what to cement is trust. Don't forget these two factors are very key in as far as true friendship is concerned. You are done to have listened to this presentation. Again, you'll be given some assessment questions. Please don't give up. Go through those assessment questions and the answers shall show later for you to just check your minds if you are following and continue studying. As far as the Bible is concerned, refer to Good News Bible. Thank you for this day.